Can full range of motion reps at the gym alone enhance your flexibility? That's a controversial question that comes up all the time. You're loading your tissues, you're hitting your joints at angles, you're engaging end range of motion strength. But is it enough? Or is this truly the optimal way to increase your flexibility? Today, we're gonna dig through some recent studies and rethink everything we know about training. My name is Coach Bachmann, and I'm the founder and head coach of Kreuz Santa Monica, the specialty gym for handstands, flexibility, and calisthenics here in LA. Lately, there's been an enormous hype around using full range reps to enhance mobility, fueled by their connection to lengthened partials, a technique designed to maximize hypertrophic adaptation. These two methods share one critical link. They emphasize putting load on the muscle in a stretch position. But the question is, how much is this actually gonna impact your flexibility on a physiological level? In today's video, we're gonna dive deep and dissect to see if full range strength training is actually making it possible for you to increase your flexibility and to see if it's the most effective way of doing so. We're gonna talk about the biomechanical and neuromuscular principles behind full range reps to understand why they've become so very popular. We're gonna look at some groundbreaking new research on how these methods might be able to trigger sacromaginesis for you and with that get you more flexible. Before then, pulling a direct comparison between full range strength training to increase your mobility and traditional flexibility exercises to see their effectiveness and where they might hit their limiting points. At the end of this video, we're gonna truly understand if full range rep training is the flexibility revolution that we've been waiting for or if it's just another misunderstood trend. In order to get started, we have to understand why full range of motion reps are so popular and why they work so well. For that, we're gonna have to zoom in to the bottom half of the rep. Recently, there have been countless of studies looking at this bottom half of the rep, especially with an extreme focus on a deep stretch at the bottom of the rep. We refer to these kind of reps as lengthened partials. There was a study published to PubMed. They took 42 athletes, who were training three times a week for a total of eight weeks. They were working on their cups. We had group number one, they were doing full range of motion reps. Group number two, were focused on the top half of the rep. And group number three, were focusing on the bottom half of the rep, really paying attention to getting a deep stretch in every single rep. Now, traditionally, we would think that it's the full range of motion group that's obviously gonna have the biggest hypertrophy gains. But turns out, it was the group with the bottom half that worked on that stretch in every single rep that ended up with the biggest hypertrophy gains. Now I know what you're thinking, that's a coincidence, it's the calves, you can train them anyways. But here's the thing, there's a second study that was able to reproduce similar results with a deadlift-like setup for hamstring and glute hypertrophy. More stretch means more muscle tension, means more mechanical damage, and with that, greater hypertrophy and bigger muscles. Having two proven examples, we can be pretty safe to take this and apply it to other exercises. We can apply the same principle to the dips or the bench Maltese fly, where we can assume that the more stretch we get, the more hypertrophy we're gonna trigger. This is also gonna apply to the chin up or even the one arm lat pull down or one arm chin up, where you get a really nice stretch in your lat as you're extending the arm. As you can see, all of these movements compare to traditional flexibility exercises. In a calf stretch, you drop your heel. In a hamstring stretch, you fold in half. And in a reverse tabletop stretch, you hyperextend the shoulders. Dynamic flexibility exercises are very similar to full range strength exercises. It is therefore obvious to assume that more muscle hypertrophy will also get you more flexible. We can basically feed two birds with one scone. But the question now is, is all of this truly enough to actually really get flexible? Well, let's dig a little bit deeper. To really understand what's happening, we're gonna have to remind ourselves what actually happens inside of the muscle when we get stronger or more flexible. Picture your muscle as a magic rope. Myofibers are tiny little threads inside the muscle that are responsible for pulling and moving the muscle around. Inside of these little strings, we've got sacrament, the smallest engaging unit inside of your muscle. I want you to picture those basically as the engine that contracts to move the muscle. When we use a rope to pull a heavy object, we place mechanical tension on the rope. The rope understands that in order not to rip, it needs to get thicker. To do so, the rope adds additional sacromeres next to each other, parallel from each other, as part of hypertrophy. 
This process is referred to as parallel sacromaginesis. But let's say we actually attach the rope to something solid and pull on it. Not trying to move something, but trying to make the rope longer. The mechanism here is similar to what we saw earlier. When the muscle is stretched under tension, the body adapts with serial sacromaginesis. We're again creating additional sacromeres, but not next to each other, but end to end. The result is you're getting more flexible. Time under tension is a driving factor when it comes to sacromaginesis. This highlights perfectly why time under tension is so very important when it comes to getting stronger or improving your flexibility. All the exercises we looked at earlier pull the muscle long, create mechanical tension, and with that, sacromaginesis. We get more flexible through all of them. So based on that, this right here truly would be a great moment to stop the video, go train full range of motion reps, get stronger and get flexible. Wouldn't that be great? But unfortunately, here comes the big but. In 2012, Michael Sampson and his team conducted a study comparing dynamic and static stretching. They took 19 athletes, and after a warm-up, they performed 90 seconds of either dynamic or static stretches. To measure their flexibility, they used the sit and reach stretch. The results were definite. The group that was performing static stretches improved their mobility by 2.8% more than the dynamic stretching group. And that was only after four sessions. This study truly proves if you're looking to maximize your flexibility gains, static stretching is scientifically superior. Additionally, there are plenty of studies that showed us that PNF stretching still has an additional slight edge to the static stretch. The reason that dynamic and ballistic stretching seems to fall short is due to the lack of time under tension. Remember, time under tension used to be the gold standard for sacromaginesis in hypertrophy before the lengths and partials came along. But for flexibility, we still believe this to be true. The more time you spend in the stretch, the more flexible you're gonna get. So, do you need to still stretch if you're already doing full range of motion training? Well, here's the bottom line. Full arm training, or really dynamic stretching, is great, and it will help you improve your flexibility to an extent. For most people who live normal lives, this is gonna be enough. Everybody should be doing dynamic stretching. This is great to temporarily increase your pain tolerance and decrease general stiffness. But if you're training goal specific, for example, for the front split or the press to handstand, or in general, you're looking to maximize your flexibility, then dynamic stretching alone is simply not gonna cover it for you. Additionally, using strength exercises to train flexibility is essentially loaded stretching, which comes with a unique set of challenges. You see, in order to trigger sacromaginesis, we need mechanical damage and tension. Hitting your end range of motion is essential if you want to trigger sacromaginesis effectively. But getting to your end range of motion in a safe manner with weights can and should take quite a bit of training. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for more flexibility and calisthenics content, then make sure you hit like and subscribe. In the meantime, if you're ready to take your training up a notch and truly take your flexibility training serious, then check out my online programming. All workouts are science-based and are gonna help you achieve consistent and lasting real gains. Get to work, I'll see you next time.